Hello and a very warm welcome to another edition of World Panorama. Like always, get ready to catch up on the biggest international news of the week. I am Sana Khan. Before we get to those detailed reports, here's a look at the top stories. Time magazine names Pope Francis its person of the year. World Panorama takes a closer look at how the Pope has managed to change perceptions over the past year. Thousands pour in to get a glimpse of their beloved leader. World leader celebrities visit Nelson Mandela's body at a plane stayed before he is laid to rest. Bangladesh on the boil. Violent protests erupt as Jamaat e Islami leader is executed for 1971 war crimes. And world leaders agree Iran and Big Pa's nuclear talks need more time IAEA to meet again on 21st January. Our top story. It's been a whirlwind year for Pope Francis. He started 2013 as a relatively unknown Argentinian Archbishop, but ended it as the beloved leader of the world's 1.2 billion Catholics and Time's Person of the Year. This is the third time the magazine has chosen a Pope as its Person of the Year. What makes this Pope so important is the speed with which he has captured the imaginations of millions who had given up on hoping for the church at all. This is what the Time magazine had said in its cover story. And change with Pope Francis came overnight. He took over a church rocked by atrocious infighting, marred by child abuse, scandals, embarrassed by private memos leaked by previous Pope's own butler, and shocked by the first abdication of a pontiff in almost 600 years. The new Pope had almost an impossible task ahead of him resurrect confidence in the Roman Catholic Church that looked lost and arcane. Against the odds, Pope Francis seems to have worked a miracle so far. Pope Francis, in a matter of months, has reformed the image of the Catholic Church from an unapproachable, extravagant institution into a humble champion of the poor. He's done this by renouncing clerical privilege, washing the feet of female convicts, jumping off the once a bulletproof Pope mobile to kiss the disabled, relaxing the conservative rhetoric on homosexuals and divorcees, and promoting a more prominent role for women in the church. Let's talk about the man's achievements over the past few months and what is it about Pope Francis that makes him the most popular figure in the world. Joining me on the show this week is Father Kunankal. He is a former uh, chairman of the CBSE, also the founder chairman of the National Institute of Open Schooling. Thanks, Father, so much for joining me on the show. Before I actually start talking to you about Pope Francis and his achievements, I've compiled this short report for our viewers. Let's have a look. Fratelli e sorelle, buonasera. Voi sapete che il dovere del conclave era di dare un vescovo a Roma. Sembra che i miei fratelli cardinali sono andati a prenderlo quasi alla fine del mondo, ma siamo qui. magazine named Pope Francis its person of the year, crediting him with shifting the message of the Catholic Church while capturing the imagination of millions of people who would become disillusioned with the Vatican. Time magazine's person of the year for 2013 is Pope Francis. We think that in the, in the nine months that he has been Pope, he has been a transformational figure. He has changed perceptions of the church. He has changed the focus of the church. He has changed the tone of the church. The church w was seen as judgmental. Now it's seen as, as compassionate and merciful. It was, it was perceived as being closed off. He's sort of opened the, the windows a little bit, bringing transparency. The Vatican welcomed time selection while making it clear. The man so widely recognized for his humility didn't seek the award and didn't want its light to shine on him, but on the mission of the church. It's certainly good for the Vatican. It helps get the message out. Uh, it's important to know that Pope Francis certainly isn't the person who looks for these kind of things. He's not the kind of person saying, oh, I can't wait till I'm on the cover of Time magazine. But certainly, if it helps get his message of mercy, his message of God's love out to a lot of people, he'll be happy about it. In September, the Argentine pontiff gave a groundbreaking and frank interview in which he said the Vatican must shake off an obsession with teachings on abortion, contraception and homosexuality and become more merciful. 
but he didn't give us an interview. He does. He didn't want to give an interview. The Pope's official line, the, the, the Vatican released a statement saying today saying that he's not seeking, as you would expect, he's not seeking to be Person of the Year. He said that if uh, being Person of the Year helps spread the gospel, then he would be happy, which is exactly what you would expect the Pope to say, which is exactly what you'd expect this Pope to say. Pope Francis beat out former U.S. National Security Agency contractor Edward Snowden and gay rights activist Edith Windsor for the award. Other finalists included Syrian President Bashar al-Assad and U.S. Senator Ted Cruz from Texas. The runner-up was Edward Snowden, Edith Wharton, um, uh, Bashar Assad, and Ted Cruz, all of whom were influential in different ways. It's important to remember that the Times Person of the Year mandate is that it's about the person who's had the greatest impact on the world and the news for good or for ill during the course of the year. So on, on the flip side, on the ill side, I think you can count Bashar Assad as somebody who's had a very strong but malign influence uh, on the world and on the news this year. U.S. Catholics are happier with their church and their pope than they've been with either in at least a decade, according to a new Washington Post ABC News poll that also finds Pope Francis at least as popular with Catholics today as Pope John Paul II was even at his peak in such surveys. Among Catholics, 92% have a favorable view of Francis and 95% say the same of the church. A poll released finds out. Francis's popularity marks a large increase from Pope Benedict XVI's 76% favorable rating in a post-ABC poll in February, just after he announced his retirement. All right, Father Kunankal, now in 91 years of Time magazine's existence, Pope Francis become only the sixth religious leader to be chosen for the cover page as the person of the year for Time magazine. What makes him join the league according to you? Well, he has gone beyond the, the boundary of Christian world. I think he is taking on the whole world. Hmm. In other words, what he says is not only for the Christians who are certainly looking for change, reform, inward, but he also, for instance, he will talk about economic reform. He will talk about money as today's idol that, which many people worship. Mm. Uh, this is a message for the whole world. Not right. that we don't need money, but don't make money an idol. Mm. Or his spirit of compassion, and now for instance, he would say that the church looks like a, should look like a field hospital after a battle go there to care for people, to heal them, to take care of their needs, the disadvantaged. Hmm. Uh, in other words, you talked about the time talks about perceptions. Uh, he has a very, very inclusive, holistic perception, very interested in dialogue, interfaith dialogue with Jews, with Muslims. Yes. Uh, because they belong to the same Abrahamic tradition. Hmm. In other words, these are very, very, something very different. This Pope is very different, very human, mm. very deeply human, very modern, uses a lot of Twitter and uh, very approachable, so, yeah. very approachable mm. and very warm. So, and very down to earth, he will carry his own bag. He will mm. not stay in the seclusion of Vatican II, the palace, but he stays in room 201 in a guest house. Mm. Not just for show. I mean, first of all, they said, well, these are nice symbols, but uh, is this, does he go beyond the symbols? Obviously, like Forbes magazine, the most influential people, he mm. counts as number fourth. Yeah. Uh, these are very real achievements. In other words, he's a game changer, mm. not only for the church, but for the world. For the world at large. So he is a religious figure in a sense That's that the right. world has been waiting for, it's safe to say. Uh, also, do you think with the kind of popularity that, uh, you know, his rising popularity among Americans, among Christians, among non Catholics as well, as we talked about, uh, do you think he comes at a time, this was the time when the church needed that huge burst of energy, and this is the right time that Pope Francis is, uh, uh, you know, has taken the position? See, we have tremendous amount of economic energy, technological energy, the money energy, all kinds of energies. I think we have progressed very well in the world. Mm. For a further progress, we need a much higher form of energy called spiritual energy. Mm. 
Yeah. And I think this is what the Pope is giving, a spiritual energy and a, a perception that is much more inclusive and much more charming to so many people. Uh, it doesn't, it goes much beyond the Christian borders. Right. It goes much beyond that. Father Kunankal, do you think that somewhere, uh, you know, the image and the perception of Pope Francis has also raised some sort of fear among the conservatives or do you not agree with this? It has, it has. And it, it will increase in anybody who work, wants to have reform will certainly have people who oppose it from those who are on the conservatives. So, it has been very strong criticism has been raised by some against him, hmm. which is I would take it as standard response, but uh, I don't think he is bothered about that. He has a plan, he has an agenda uh, that is larger than some of the criticism. All right, so uh, critiques will always continue to exist. Also, some of the bold steps that he'd taken, like opened up the church's finances, addressed controversial issues uh, out in the open. That is something, do you think, which has really clicked with the people and helped him achieve this popularity that we're talking about? Yeah, perhaps transparency was something that was very much needed in the church. Also decentralization, you know, right. too much of authority, power concentrated in a few people, uh, which he is, hopefully he is trying to break that. Uh, Vatican Bank, uh, remember I think the Time magazine says that the first annual report after 125 years has come <laughs> out. Now, that is quite an achievement. Mm. So, it, he is opening up. Right. Now, uh, let's talk a bit about the controversy side that Pope Francis has stirred uh, among some conservatives, like we talked about, for trying to steer church away from uh, focus on social issues such as contraception, abortion and same-sex marriage. This has caused him uh, the main trouble in the past few months from March when he took office till now. Uh, what do you think is his plan of action going to be in the years to come? See, he is not a radical in the sense of ultra uh, hmm. progressive. He has elements of, so he wants to preserve the basic doctrines of the church or willing to have it examined, okay. you know, have it examined. I mean, for me, for him to, to hear him say that uh, if somebody has a tendency for homosexual, hmm. who am I to judge? That's right. I mean, to me, it is a beautiful confession of openness and, you know, there is place for differences in the human society. Uh, for the Pope to say that, I thought was a beautiful thing. Who am I to judge this one? And also, it brings out a point that you said right in the beginning. He's more human. So, that's he's right. saying that I'm not the judge. I cannot say what is right and that's what is a, that's wrong. That's right, yes. Uh, it's very interesting, uh, this figure. So, a uh, any comparisons uh, or major differences that you would like to share with our viewers about Pope Francis and the, uh, his predecessors? Because it is a little unfair because they are all so very different. Pope John Paul XXIII was uh, just, a, uh, they, he called himself a big window opener. He opened the window and then let fresh air come in and lots of beautiful things have happened in the church through Vatican II. Hmm. John Paul II came in. Uh, and then Benedict, yes. and now he. I think each one has its own charisma or characteristic and make their own distinct contributions. I think mm -hmm. the contributions they are going to make are quite different. Uh, I am very glad especially to see that today if we can unite people, you know, there's a beautiful sentence that John Paul II said after he had an inter-religious mm -hmm. meeting in Assisi when there was a lot of criticism against him, how can you pray with Muslims and Hindus, right. a Pope? He answered, his answer was, what unites is divine, what divides is not. A beautiful direction that he gave. What unites is divine, God is present. What right. divides is not, God is absent there. I think what the world needs today, the world has enough resources to become, make abundance mm. available to everyone. But definitely but Pope Francis, even the Time magazine has mentioned, he is seen as a uniter and that's perhaps uh, something that has worked for him so well and uh, ah. helped him achieve this kind of popularity among all faiths uh, uh, across board. Thank you so much, Father Kunankal. It was a pleasure having you on the show with me and sharing those ah. thoughts with Thank us. Thank you. Thank Thanks you. Thanks once again. With yeah. that, we're taking a short break. Lots more up ahead. A look at how the world paid tribute to their icon, Nelson Mandela. I'll be right back.
You're watching World Panorama. He lay in a bronze coffin with military officials in starched white naval uniforms standing tall around him. The body of Nelson Mandela, dressed in an African pattern shirt of golden brown, drew an emotional reaction from many people who passed by to see him for the final time. Here's a closer look at how people continue to remember their beloved leader, Madiba. Africa is taking its time to mourn Nelson Mandela and for a simple reason. So integral is Mandela to how South Africans think of themselves that many find it hard to accept that he's gone. As thousands of people queued to say goodbye to Mandela, whose body was lying in state in Pretoria, hundreds more were able to follow the proceedings from various television screens around the country. In Pretoria, foreign dignitaries and celebrities join thousands of South Africans at the imposing union buildings for a last chance to see the body of the man regarded as the father of democratic South Africa. Earlier, a grand memorial service was held to honor Nelson Mandela at Soweto's FNB Stadium. World leaders from over 90 countries flew in to pay their last respects. We join together in sorrow for a mighty loss and in celebration of a mighty life. What a wondrous display of this rainbow nation. In nature, rainbow emerges from rain and the sun. It is that blending of the symbol of grief and gratitude that I feel today. For the people of South Africa, for those he inspired around the globe, Madiba's passing is rightly a time of mourning and a time to celebrate a heroic life. But I believe it should also prompt in each of us a time for self-reflection. With honesty, regardless of our station or our circumstance, we must ask, how well have I applied his lessons in my own life? In the face of the severest persecution, punishment, and relentless oppression, Nelson Mandela continued his nonviolent struggle with dignity and pride, refusing to be intimidated. He never diminished his commitment to his kind of satyagraha against injustice and inequality. Since his death was announced late Friday, South Africans have also been gathering outside the former president's home in Johannesburg to pay tribute to the man revered as the father of the country. Madiba's body will lie in state for a third and final day on Friday before being flown to the Eastern Cape to be buried on December 15th at his ancestral home in Kunu, 700 kilometers south of Johannesburg. And Bangladesh on Thursday executed an opposition leader convicted of war crimes hours after the Supreme Court rejected his last-minute appeal. Fears that the execution of Abdul Qadir Mullah, the first person to be put to death for massacres committed during the war, were realized on Friday morning as reports began to emerge of street skirmishes in towns and cities. Here's a report. A wave of violence has swept through Bangladesh, rallies followed by protests on the streets. At least four people died when violence broke out after Jamaati Islami leader Abdul Qadir Mullah was executed on Thursday night for genocide during the country's 1971 liberation war. The hanging of uh, Qadir Mullah already executed and that was uh, performed at 10 p.m. Uh, in Bangladesh local time and uh, the district administration uh, Chief uh, Sheikh Yusuf Harun confirmed the matter. Mullah was hanged at Dhaka Central Jail after a dramatic wake. He won a reprieve on Tuesday, hours before he was to be sent to the gallows. After two days of legal argument, the Supreme Court rejected his application for a review of the death penalty. Today is a big day and I think it's an achievement of the, the Ganajagan Manchu because they began the uh, movement back in February. 
Jamaati Islami Party called for a nationwide dawn to dust general strike on Sunday in protest of the execution of its leader Abdul Qadir Mullah. The case has exposed the explosive political tensions in Bangladesh between the ruling party and the opposition ahead of national elections next month. Iran's nuclear program has again been the subject of high-level talks in Vienna. Tehran's envoy to UN Atomic Energy Agency Reza Najafi and Chief UN Nuclear Inspector have held talks on implementation of six practical measures that are part of a joint agreement between the two sides signed last month. Iran and the UN Nuclear Agency have agreed to meet again on 21st January, this time in Tehran. The UN Nuclear Agency and Iran aim to reach an agreement next month on the future steps to be taken by Tehran to help clarify concerns about its atomic activities. The International Atomic Energy Agency and Iran decided to meet again to further discuss the country's disputed nuclear program. We had a productive meeting today. We reviewed, firstly, the implementation of the six practical measures that are part of the joint cooperation framework that we have with Iran, which was signed in November 11th. That also included the technical visit that we did in heavy water production plant in Iraq 8th of December. During this time, Russian Foreign Minister met his Iranian counterpart in Tehran and had a joint press meeting focusing on the bilateral, political and economic relations. We are going to meet again on 21st of January in Tehran. Uh, to continue our discussion for the practical measures for the next phase and uh, in the meantime uh, we have two more months to uh, implement the other measures we agreed in Tehran so uh, we're going to uh, also inform the agency with regard to implementation of those measures. Meanwhile, U.S. Secretary of State John Kerry defended the interim nuclear agreement with Iran to skeptical U.S. lawmakers pleading not to impose new sanctions. Unas. Есть общее понимание того, что Женевский документ необходимо исполнять добросовестно всем сторонам. Будем этого добиваться, равно как и будем напряженно и целенаправленно работать над следующей стадией урегулирования, формированием окончательного пакета, который по позволит полностью закрыть. Санкционные пресс-пресс, которые привели Иран к договорительной стене, занимали годы, чтобы построить. Пока интервью договорительного решения ограничено, государства по всему миру не будут легко убедиться, чтобы развернуть курс и разрушить санкционные пресс-пресс, если Иран только будет покупать время с этим договорительным решением. Если Иран только будет покупать время с этим договорительным решением. The U.S. and other world powers reached an agreement with Iran last month that provides Iran with $7 billion in relief from U.S. economic penalties in exchange for a series of nuclear concessions. And over in Ukraine, pro-EU demonstrators dug in as the United States warned of possible sanctions over Kiev's crackdown on opposition protests, urging authorities to show restraint. The demonstrators who've occupied the capital's independence square in anger at the rejection of a landmark European Union pact forced riot police to retreat following a pre-dawn raid on Wednesday on their protest camp in a blow to the authority of President Viktor Yanukovych. International pressure is now mounting on the embattled leader. Ukraine's pro-EU demonstrators intensified their standoff against President Viktor Yanukovych, streaming onto the capital's main square by the thousand as their leaders contemplated entering into negotiations with the president. On Thursday, EU's top foreign policy chief said Ukraine still intends to sign an association pact with the bloc. Yanukovych made it clear to me that he intends to sign the association agreement. At the same time, pressure increased on Yanukovych after the U.S. said it's now considering sanctions against Ukraine. All policy options, uh, including sanctions, are on the table uh, in our view, uh, but obviously that still is being uh, evaluated. A day earlier, Yanukovych invited all parties, including the opposition, for talks to find a political compromise to a growing political crisis, an offer that the opposition rejected. Заради досягнення компромісу. Закликаю опозицію 
не відмовлятись, не йти дорогою протистояння та ультиматумів. Запевняю, що влада діятиме виключно в рамках закону і ніколи не вживатиме сили проти мирних зібрань. Ukraine also put forth a demand of 20 billion euros in aid from the European Union in return for signing an agreement on trade and cooperation. Prime Minister Mykola Azarov said the 28 country bloc should join in mutually profitable projects in Ukraine, an ex-Soviet state of 46 million people reliant on Soviet era steel and chemical production. Того часу, поки не будуть виконані наші вимоги, плюс, як на мене, ще треба додати вимогу про виведення усіх спецпідрозділів за межі міста Києва. Ніяких розмов з цією владою бути просто не може. Що ми не чекаємо і не просимо, щоб нам щось подарували або компенсували. Не йдеться про те, щоб Євросоюз надав необхідну технічну підтримку для переходу вітчизняної промисловості на єврорегламенти. Перш за все, мова йде про участь взаємовигідних великих проектах, які завантажують наші підприємства роботи на кілька років. If Ukraine does go ahead and sign the EU Association and Free Trade Pact, it will take the sting out of the protest. Although in the past weeks they have also taken on a personalized air, with opposition leaders demanding Yanukovych's resignation and snap presidential and parliamentary elections. Signing would be an about phase for Yanukovych, since his rejection of the deal last month made it clear he sought closer links with Russia instead. Mass protests in Kyiv since have been calling for closer links with the European Union. Well, that's all we have for you in this edition of World Panorama. See you next week, same time, with more international news. Till then, you can follow us on Facebook and Twitter. Well, Christmas is just around the corner and world over, people are busy prepping up for a grand Christmas Eve. Here are a few snapshots as I close the show with how people are gearing up for the big day. Enjoy. I'll be back soon. Thank you.